Hello everyone, Alexa Dunn here, long time no see, but I went to WonderCon this past weekend and I ran into Chuck Tingle, I was on a panel with Chuck Tingle, and the first thing he said to me was he was so excited to meet me because he's a huge fan of this channel. Why wasn't I making videos anymore? So here I am. <laughs> you can all thank Chuck Tingle for reminding me, oh yeah, people have been begging me to make videos again. Um, I cannot promise it's ever gonna go back to the way it was, but I have also been promising for years I was leveling up my skills while working on my book and I'd have more content and I do have that content. So it's high time I, I make it. I will at least make some videos and this video is your classic rambling where have I been video. Cause I need to kind of warm back up into this cause I feel like I've forgotten how to do this. And um, I mean, you probably want to, you can hear my cats playing in the background. That's one update. My filming space is where the cats have scratching posts and toys now. So they have been hovering and bumping the camera. I've kind of, you know, they're like, why is she sitting on the floor? They're not accustomed to this. So it's going to be really, really fun. You might get lots of cat cameos and, and sounds, but the cats are three now, and my dearly beloved Teddy actually passed away a year ago now. I just haven't been making videos, but right at the top, I've been happy. I have been enjoying kind of finding that balance, and I know I talked about this in previous videos of just like my day job, writing books, and then other stuff. YouTube used to take up a lot of bandwidth in my life, which is why I can tell you I can't go back to what I used to do because now I fill that space with other hobbies and it's been really nice. I've been cooking and gardening and actually taking vacations and going on cruises and just playing video games when I'm not writing and I really should be writing. But above all, and I'm going to make a whole video on this because I'm promising you I'm going to make more videos because I want to deeply reflect on just being an author and what it kind of means to just be a writer, to be an author in this era where we feel this pressure, not feel, I mean there is, the pressure is real to be a person on the internet, to be an author on social media, author as brand, which I've talked about, and uh, a lot of my feelings and ideas about authors and social media have changed as I, as social media has evolved and as I've taken my own break, but I've just enjoyed being a writer, just writing books, and then dealing with all this other stuff. Like, balance, balance is incredibly important in your life, and I've found interesting balance. But I have, I have missed you, and I know many of you are like, I'm not gonna go to TikTok, because I have making some TikToks, but don't worry, not all the good content, because it, it has limitations as a platform, but it has pros as a platform, which is why I've also been posting more YouTube shorts, now that finally YouTube hasn't forced us to put them on the main video page, because like, I'm way too anal retentive to have that mixed feed. So now it has its own tab. So I have been posting some YouTube shorts. So I'm just gonna try to find better balance in YouTube here as well. Because as much as I enjoy TikTok and as magical as TikTok and BookTok can be, the algorithm has shifted where I don't think we're going to see more author breakouts in the way that we have seen author breakouts. I think that the shift has already happened, which was always inevitably going to happen, where I don't think it's worth your bandwidth as an author to go all in on TikTok unless you really, really enjoy it. And even then, I, I think you're going to be frustrated. I've seen a total change in the algorithm, how it responds to my content. And I was chatting with Victoria Aviard. I don't mean that as a flex. I was talking to Victoria Aviard, but how bizarre is that? I was talking to Victoria Aviard, who is way more active on TikTok and has been consistently active. And she says the algorithm has changed for her video, her videos too. And so when she says it, I believe her and I feel a little less crazy and a little less pressure to kind of be, be an author on TikTok as well. But let's talk about this book. This is one of the big reasons I have not been here for two years. This book took two years to write. Well, isn't it beautiful? Isn't it? I did post a short about this. I have a physical arc. Oh my god. I want to like, I love it so much. So story time. <laughs> I did not get arcs, advanced reader copies, physical arcs for the IVs 
or Pretty Dead Queens, my thrillers with Penguin Random House. And there were reasons for that. COVID changed a lot in publishing. For the early parts of it, they fit, they literally, there was no office to go to to physically mail out ARCs, but also we've seen so many shifts with paper shortages and issues with printers. Like I have, those have been ongoing long enough, I have made videos about that on this channel. And Penguin Random House in general has been trying to kind of really limit ARCs. They are expensive to print. They're essentially a marketing tactic and they can take up a large chunk of a marketing budget with nebulous ROI. It's hard to prove return on investment on physical ARCs. At the same time, I will tell you as an author, I 100% noticed and felt the difference in not having them on two books in a row. It's very much turned into a have and have nots in publishing, particularly in the YA space of like, who has physical arcs versus who doesn't? Because it's just so much easier to promote an upcoming release as an author, etc. When you have a physical, a gorgeous physical object in your hands, like I can do those page flip TikToks and reels just like I have showed this to people and it's caught their eye like we're gonna see what the full promotional cycle of this book ends up being but I already feel so much more confident having physical arcs so profuse thanks to my team my editor and her boss so the head of my imprint advocated hard for these arcs they worked with the marketing team who got on board thank you to the marketing team and I just I'm so in love I'm so in love um because yeah I just I have something to promote on social media and It'll go into the authors on social media video, but that's a, a thing. We feel this pressure to be one person promotional machines on social. Like we have to generate all of this hype for our books and that is so much easier with a physical book. But also just so many of the social channels, even if you're not doing it yourself, um, people who hype up books on platforms, whether it's YouTube, Bookstagram, BookTok, 98% of them get the most traction in terms of viral videos, etc, etc, with physical arcs. That said, I have to give credit where credit is due. My team at PRH is phenomenal at pushing out digital arcs. They do a great job. They did a great job with Ivies and they did a great job with Pretty Dead Queens, but I am excited for that like kind of like third vector, second vector, Matt don't trust me to do math or metaphors, but that it's just going to be multi-pronged this time because they do really good pushes for me on NetGalley and Edelweiss. They're fantastic about sending widgets and facilitating giveaways, but just I've been impressed with who they approve for ARCs. They're so good at like being like, this is the right audience. They prioritize educators. Not that like media reviewers don't also get copies, but they kind of do this rollout approach to art. I could go on and on. They're very, very good at digital arc rollout, but now we also have a physical copy. I can take this and do giveaways at events. I can do giveaways on social media, which I need to do. Um, I didn't do a cover reveal on YouTube. I really have betrayed you for so long, so we can talk about the cover a little. So this is my next YA thriller, The Bitter End. Look at this cover. And uh, look what I got. I made myself a hoodie to match my cover. No regrets. I will be wearing this whenever it is actually cold enough to wear this and we'll probably have to order a t-shirt version because I live in Southern California. It is rarely cold enough to wear a hoodie. Um, this is a real sweatshirt. My cover designer, Casey Moses, I have been blessed in the cover design world at Penguin Random House. One of the reasons I adore my publisher because I get Casey Moses, who is chef's kiss. She did the Ivies, she did Pretty Dead Queens, and she did The Bitter End. She designed a real sweatshirt ordered it this is a physical object and then did a photo shoot I love you I lo this also marks the first and only actually technically the second time 
I did have an idea for the Brightly Burning paperback and my publisher did use it. This one. I did actually have this idea when they inquired if I had ideas for my paperback recover. Partial credit to me. But this marks the only time with thrillers and a Penguin Random House where I had an idea and it had legs. <laughs> they asked me for that initial brainstorm on ideas and I was thinking, I, I didn't say like hoodie with blood on it, but I was like what, because they wear a lot of hoodies in the book and it's wintry, there's a storm, they're trapped on a mountain. I was like what about like a sweater, like em embroidered sweater, like I've seen covers that do that. I think they're cool, like real object and I was definitely inspired by and I cited to them this phenomenal cover. I love this cover, Jessica Goodman. Um, yeah. And Casey just outdid herself. Outdid herself. The only small thing is it is a sweatshirt because it looked best for a cover, but in the book they wear hoodies. And I don't wear sweatshirts, I wear hoodies, so that's why I got a hoodie. That's a little bit of authorly creative license, but... What is this book actually about? I didn't vlog this one because the writing process was so horrifically chaotic. Maybe someday I will be ready to share it with you in hindsight because it was intense. I guess I technically will because we're going back to from first draft to final draft videos. I'm gonna do the one for Pretty Dead Queens. Finally, it will only be a year and a half late. <laughs> and then this book is out in October. And once this has been out in the world for a little while and people have read it, and I can do a spoilery video for that. I will, I will do that. So I guess I am gonna have to trauma dump on you about the process of writing this book. Some books are harder to write than others. This book was really hard to write, but man is the payoff good. I am proud of this book. This is my love letter to my favorite thriller trope, the isolation, closed circle mystery trope, the and then there were none trope. I'm trapping prep school teens on a mountain. They are gonna start dying. There is a blizzard. So the tagline on this one is eight teens, one blizzard, zero exits, and a killer on the loose. Ooh, it is multi POV, multi timeline, because I hate myself. And it means you're gonna get a video on all of my thoughts, the don't do what I did of writing multi POV. Uh, I'll probably talk about nonlinear formats and thrillers because it's a thing I love as a reader and this was my first time attempting it. Whew. You know, I set myself a challenge for every book I write and that, I mean, there were multiple challenges I did for this one and it was definitely illuminating. I've done some leveling up and maybe now you'll you'll get some more content. I love the back cover blurb for this. My editor wrote this. I think this gives you a really good overview of the book and I am going to read it to you because I am fun. Willa believes she's cursed. Now bad luck has followed her up a mountain. Declan became TikTok famous for pranks, but this trip is no joke. Delaney is the perfect girlfriend. Her boyfriend? He's the perfect liar. Wyatt has mastered every video game. Too bad there are no extra lives, IRL. Eden has never shied away from drama. Will her secrets get the best of her? Liam is a literal boy scout. Now he'll have to put his survival skills to use. Camille is the ultimate competitor, and she'll fight to the death. Piper wasn't supposed to be on this trip at all. Or was she? I love it so much, and the formatting inside, I did do a short on this. Oh, oh, we caught this in past pages. I just opened this and found an error. I was like, wait, we caught this in past pages? Because, go figure that I opened to that. Look at my chapter headers. They've got like a little mountain. And I did parts. So there's like snow on the page and I have like a hoity-toity quote on them and uh, more than half of the quotes for the parts are from all those mountaineering nonfiction books I read because who doesn't love a theme? Part two, for example, is up here where we need each other the most. It's every man for himself. Greg Child, who is a mountaineer, and I read that quote in a book. Um, I promised this would be rambling, and I am delivering. But yeah, essentially, this book took me two years from like start, like the most nascent of starts, to turning it in. And then it's like a full year after that until you get it in your hot little hands. But it is going to be the perfect fall into winter vibes book. I'm super excited for it. Arcs have gone out, and so far, it's getting the most positive early reception one of my books has gotten. Jinx? 
I feel like I've jinxed it by saying that out loud now, but like, I'm really excited about this. I'm really proud of it. I can't wait for you to read it. If you are on NetGalley and you have an account, request an ARC. You can read it early. I will, you know, get my ish together and do some giveaways. And yeah, let's talk about like, what's the plan? Just some topics you can maybe expect from me. Um, as I said, I definitely want to talk about kind of revising my thoughts on being an author on social media and how to approach that aspect because I'm in a privileged position as someone who did all that a long time ago and is now kind of mid-career. There are definitely different variables for me to consider as more of a mid-career author in terms of what I feel that I have to do, um, but maybe I can give some new sage advice to people. Everyone is asking for like a state of the industry like querying update and honestly I don't know if I am in the best position to make that video. Uh, I know what it's like for me, but I'm way less tapped in to kind of what it's like like for people querying right now, aside from a couple people that I have been kind of helping, mentees and like people from Reddit. Um, we'll see if I feel confident enough to make a video on that. I might make a video on AI. Like that almost made me make a video last year. I was so close to being like, <laughs> thoughts, I have them. Uh, we'll see. Uh, something on multi POV, something on unreliable narrators, because as I move into adult, which is another potential topic, kind of YA thriller versus adult thriller, because I did finally start one of those, barely, barely started, but I did finally start one of those. I intend to definitely explore non-linear structure more, unreliable narrators and adult thrillers, because I love a good unreliable narrator. Um, I'm going to do more multi POV books. Uh, I can maybe talk about first versus third person. Maybe that'll go into the YA versus adult because third person is something I'm definitely going to be using strategically in adult thrillers because I can won't get into the weeds on that yet. Um, I just want to talk about like kind of my I'll talk more about my personal mindsets about my own career and how I'm feeling about being a writer uh, in another video because I do have I've done a lot of soul searching I have a lot of thoughts um, that, that we can talk about because above all I I know that this channel helps a lot of people and I love that that's the entire reason I started this YouTube channel never made this channel to sell books and it doesn't really sell a lot of books so that kind of works out I, if you come into any social media space where you're like okay my aim is to sell books i think ultimately it's going to make you miserable but i genuinely like helping people figure out publishing and get a foot in the door so maybe chuck tingle and him telling me he like works out at the gym and like listens to my videos you know it was uh, over a year now but like meeting Allie hazelwood and the first thing out of her mouth was like i love your channel you helped me get published and I love having those experiences. Ashley Winstad was another one who met me in person and like said thank you. And I'm like, because these are writers I think are so cool. And I'm like, I helped. So first of all, if you see me in person, no matter what stage you're at, if I helped you like feel, say hi, I want to say hi to you because it genuinely like it makes all of the negatives because there are many negatives. Um, that I've had with this YouTube channel, most of which I keep private because I don't want to like, I love being professional, but like it makes a lot of them worth it. So thank you. Um, and I do like helping people and I know that it's helpful when I am transparent and open and as honest as I am comfortable being with you about like the pitfalls of publishing or like how I'm feeling or how the journey is going and the kind of realistic you. So yeah, I will I will make I will make some content on that. Um, so this is the ripping off the band-aid filming. I'm gonna edit it, see how rusty I am, get back in the groove. I am gonna continue to utilize shorts and have that kind of balance because the algorithm likes shorts now. And I've been trying to be better at reels content as well. Cause I basically went into a writing cave for two years and that's a large reason you haven't seen me. Plus all the stuff I covered in previous videos, personal stuff. Uh, I sold my mom's condo. I cleared out the last of the stuff. It's been in storage. My next hurdle is I'm still waiting for the market to figure itself out because I need to like 
find a new place to live because the, the apartment I've been in for 15 years is not big enough for like the last of the stuff for my mom's condo and I don't want to pay monthly let's not get into the weeds on my personal life I still have stuff going on and stuff I have to figure out and I, I guess I'll stick it in here it's more appropriate here than maybe one of the other videos just like life updating stuff it's it's really morbid it's really depressing I did not share this on most of my socials because it's a weird thing to share um just but the other thing that definitely shifted and means that I have to be a lot more thoughtful about kind of my balance in my life with my job and everything um my direct manager passed away last August it was sudden it was a shock she was not I mean barely much older than I am it was horrific awful um weird but I was and am part of a very small team at my job. I love my job. I have a great day job and I've always had a lovely understanding team who support my career and continue to support my career and helping me with that balance. I became the entire marketing department uh, when my, my boss unfortunately passed away. I am the entire marketing department now. Uh, essentially, against my will, I got a promotion. And as when something kind of big and earth shattering and, and tragic and morbid happens, you know, I, I've done some reevaluating and soul searching. It's, it's a natural thing to do. I, I definitely, as I've done more traveling, because my boss really valued traveling and was always encouraging me to travel, and I've done that. Uh, now and I think of her when I go and I'm like she would have been so proud to see me actually get out of my introvert homebody bubble and go somewhere and I have been trying to do more of that like going out and having experiences and like valuing each day and be on top of my health <laughs> I have a checkup with the doctor because it's like really scary when um, an ex something sudden happens health-wise with someone who you know who is barely older than you are um and they pass away um but also with the job it's you know before we were a really good two-person team <laughs> but she was she was like the driving force she had great ideas i liked being a little foot soldier a marketing foot soldier because it gave me all this bandwidth to do my writing and I recommend that generally if you're looking for a good day job to balance with a writer career find something where it's dynamic and interesting enough for you but you don't have total and full responsibility where you have to commit all of your emotional and kind of creative and you know energy power to a job because uh, that will take away from writing and I was happy to be a worker bee I'm a very good worker bee um, it's so funny because when I was younger, I always wanted to be that like go getter, take charge, like do the thing. And then I realized one day, oh, if I'm more of a worker bee, I can write books. <laughs> so it's great. Without getting into the weeds, as I said, I'm now the entire marketing department and I'm just kind of reevaluating that balance between day job and writing books. Not going to stop writing books or being an author, but it means more than ever. I really can't prioritize a whole other channel of social media, etc. Because it just takes up so much bandwidth and space. So you're going to get a little bit of me. Uh, but my priority, which I will talk more about in the what does it mean to me to be an author at this juncture going forward. Um, my priority is obviously like day job and supporting myself and like living my life, which is great and writing books and enjoying writing books. I've, it's always been about enjoyment. I like writing books. I also, I actually like marketing because it is my day job. I like marketing books. I like the marketing cycle. I love having this arc and coming up with creative ideas. The problem is I like it so much that then I don't write. <laughs> I kind of have to pick between two modes. There's a switch and I'm either in book writing mode or book promotion mode and I feel like book writing mode needs to come first because as fun as promotion is it's like it's a fleeting dopamine hit like you're chasing the dopamine of like promotion 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 but with the highs come the lows but what's nice about writing I mean mind you it's a slog until you get the product but it is it's so nice to end up with a book that you're really, really proud of. Um, so I am really excited about finally, I, I made a funny short about it, but I mean it. I've been talking about writing adult for at least four years, probably more like five, maybe even six. Now I'm finally doing it and I'm excited for that next chapter. Um, yeah, that is your obligatory, I guess I'm making a video rambling update video um, and I will make real 
real content for you shortly. I promise. And like, if I were better at like filming and had like a nicer apartment, like you get like a, you get this, this looks nice enough. Um, my apartment ain't fancy. I don't have a nice kitchen and I'm a messy bunny. Um, if I had a nicer kitchen, I would make cooking content for you. And I find it mildly bumming. It's like, oh, I can't because I'm really enjoying cooking and the gardening I'm doing is I'm growing herbs for cooking. Let me tell you, fresh parsley and pasta. How have I not before? <sighs> Loving it. I'm growing thyme and basil and rose. It I am enjoying it, and so if I had a slightly nicer homestead, I would make that content for you, and we might pivot. I also considered, should this be a cruise channel? It, it's not. Um, I film things on my cruises and then never post them, which is hilarious, because I'm really bad at that. But, like, I am cruising more. And I thought, like, you know, should there be a spinoff channel? It's like, author cruising, but no, I won't do that, because that sounds like a lot of work. Uh, but yeah, per my last similar video to this, if you are also a cruiser, let me know down below, because like genuinely, I just want to find more cruise people. My next cruise is Alaska, and I'm so excited. I'm doing a very basic Alaska cruise, because my like longer term bucket list cruise that I'm saving up for is cruise plus land tour, because I want to go to Denali, because you know, mountain books. I mean, I won't climb the mountain. I just want to look at it in person. So I'm just excited about like the, the version of me that actually takes vacations. It's such a novelty. Oh, I have events coming up. I've posted about them on the community page, but I'll stick them in this video. Uh, so I'm doing an event with Holly Jackson on April 9th. I'm doing Trish Lundy in LA. She is a fantastic debut YA thriller author. She's local. This book was so good. I read it in literally a day. I did it on audio, but this is the physical copy of the book. If you're looking for a YA thriller with like Murtaugh murders vibes, that's what how I would kind of describe this. Like rich boys, good old rich boys in a small town and did they like murder their girlfriends? Like love, love the vibe. Really good. I'm doing her launch event in LA on April 18th at Romans. I will also be doing a signing at the LA Times Festival of Books and I'll post more of that like information about where to actually find me because I don't know if I'm officially allowed to like say that, but I am. I'm, I'm, I'll be signing books somewhere at the LA Times Festival of Books on I think it's April 21st. So I'm gonna be places. I'm gonna be doing things. I will be at BoucherCon 2024. That is over Labor Day weekend in Nashville. If you are local to there or just a mystery murder book writer fan, I cannot recommend BoucherCon enough. And I can't even remember if I made content after BoucherCon on this channel because when is the last time I made a video? I don't know. I probably did, didn't. So uh, I went to BoucherCon last year and it was a transformative experience. It was incredible. I felt like I was with my people. Murder people are my people. Mystery writers, mystery readers. It's this big, vibrant, welcoming community. I felt so among my people. I had an amazing time and now I'm a voucher con girl so I'm going this year. Hopefully gonna be on a panel but Either way, just attending attending panels, enjoying vibes. So if you are also a mystery thriller writer or reader, it's actually more readers who go to BoucherCon. Go to BoucherCon. Like one of the best weekends of my life, money well spent, highly recommend going to be there. And then the bitter end will be out next October. And I'm sure I'll do some events uh, for this as well, hopefully, maybe. And it's a promotional year. Yay, I'm doing things, yay. Um, but I just have to remind myself, I really need to like write again. This book burned me out a little. I've been on an extended hiatus. So maybe I'll, I'll talk a little bit maybe about writer burnout. I still contend that writer's block isn't a thing in the way that people use it, but anyone can burn out creatively. And I have said that before when I have talked about writer's block. And so I think that maybe I can uh, make a video, though I don't have particularly helpful tips other than guilt yourself over and over and over again about how you're not writing until you write. Worked for me. I did start last weekend um, and I'm going on a writing retreat before the Holly Jackson event, uh, which was another like kick in the pants. I said to all my friends, I'm like, who wants to force themselves to write by feeling you know, like socially pressured because you're with a group in a place and that's like your soul. It's going to be amazing. So 
yeah thank you for watching thank you for indulging me and waiting this long i hope everyone has been well and you can officially thank chuck tingle for guilting shaming not literally that like like i felt the guilt and the shame <laughs> me into making content again because like when Chuck Tingle says I love your channel you haven't posted in a while you go oh gosh I have not posted in a really long time maybe maybe I should do something about that I'd been kind of guilting myself for a while about not posting and that was the kick in the butt that I needed so here we are thank you for watching and as always everyone happy writing